Hey guys, money news, load board I suppose, Sunday afternoon. I usually do this in the morning, but I've been busy. I actually cut the grass today for my wife. Unless we got up early and ran catfish lines and went 0 for 10. Not a good catfishing day. I come back and cut the grass, man, all eight acres of it. It took like five hours, so I was out in that heat riding the mower. So I don't really know any news. It's been a little bit slow. Um, there's a real good reason for that, which is funny as you watch all these YouTube experts. They can't figure it out, and the answer's right in front of their face, really. Um, everybody had been waiting to see what the feds were going to do with the interest rate. It says, uh... People that build stuff and buy stuff in large quantities, they don't do it with their own money. If you didn't know that, they borrow money. Um, so they were uh, they were holding off buying stuff to see if the feds were going to drop the rate, which they did not. Uh, which is good. I know that. I know that sounds like what? What? Well, inflation's out of control, guys, um, and that's how we bring inflation down by keeping the interest rates high to get people to stop buying stupid stuff like. $80,000 SUVs, $100,000 diesel pickups, just ridiculous, or 200 and some thousand dollar semi truck. So um, we don't want to encourage them to buy that because those prices need to come down. And uh, it's basically, it's always supply and demand on what the consumer will pay, okay? So if you cannot sell cars and pickups for a hundred grand and semis for two hundred grand, you will lower your prices. That's how it works. I know everybody wants to blame the president or whoever is president at the time, which is silliness because the president does not set the prices on anything. Okay, he doesn't set interest rates, and he has no control over inflation. Uh, we are in a free market. If we were in a socialist market, that would be different. But we are in a free capitalist market, and it's all supply and demand and what the consumer will pay. So I know that might shake up some of you guys, but politics has little to do with the price of consumer goods. And, of course, consumer goods have been super high since COVID. That's a global thing. Uh, if you don't know... Uh, our country is actually really low on inflation. It may not seem like it because everything costs so much and food's out of control and everything costs more nowadays. But in reality, our inflation rate is amongst the lowest. In the UK, the inflation rate is double, almost triple what ours is. So we're actually doing pretty good. So um, anyway, so they didn't drop the rate. So that was July 31st the other day. And they're going to hold the rates where they are, it looks like. So you'll start to see things pick back up a little bit. It's not going to be gangbusters because everything still costs money. But this little low of the last couple, three weeks should start to revert back now. That's all I got for news. Three minutes of economics 101. It doesn't really take a rocket, science to f rocket scientist or an economics major to figure this out. Pretty simple stuff. Okay, I guess we'll go look at the load board, um, and then we'll we'll see what I did this last week. Um, I was going to leave today, I just didn't feel like it. I'm actually loaded uh, with the cheapest load I've ever had on my truck in four years, but it is what it is. Um, I probably wouldn't have taken it. I'll get to that in the news, but or the money part. All right, so let me let's go look at the load board. I do not, I did not have any requests. All uh. I'll stop this and go through the comments on YouTube, but I don't think I actually had any load board requests. Uh, man, I've done everywhere twice, but um, we'll jump around and look at a few areas. All right, see you in a minute. <coughs> All right, here we go. Load board. Um, I don't know. Jeez, um, I had no requests, so I don't know. We'll do a Chicago. It's been pretty, it's still pretty dead up there between everybody holding off and the the white Volvo Russian mafia hauling freight for nothing, but let's look around anyways. Uh, date, uh, yeah, we'll do date range up today. We'll look out to Wednesday, I guess. All right. Five loads, not much. And thousand on 300. That's three and some change a mile. Not bad. Kansas city, Missouri, 1500 yeah i mean a little bit of stuff nothing 
Nothing too exciting. All right, let's, uh, where you guys want to go? Let's look in Detroit. Lori seldom leaves anything on the board over the weekend, but we'll take a peek. One load. Okay. That's not even hers. That's out of Ohio. Let's look over at Pittsburgh. Um, let's see here. Oh, I've got 13 loads in Pittsburgh. Quite a bit of stuff on the board. Uh, that pays pretty good, pretty good. All right. Let's see. We're just going to do a quick load board. I'm going to do a quick video all the way around. Um, I don't know, Atlanta. Atlanta. Four loads. Yeah, not much. One more, since I didn't have any requests, we'll do the old Birmingham. Just turn around the, uh, the Midwest and South a little bit. Nine loads. Decatur, 1500 on 411. That's a pretty good rate. Uh, not too bad. And uh, California, we don't go there. So South Carolina, yeah, some stuff over there. All right, let me crunch some numbers. And that's all I got. No requests for the load boards. If you guys want to see them, let me know. All right. <clears throat> all right, turn that light off so it wouldn't annoy you. Hopefully I can see what I got written down here. Okay, man, here we go. It's an ugly week. I never worked so hard for so little in my life, but it is what it is, and that's trucking. Sometimes, uh, most of the time we do good. Sometimes we have weeks like this, but this week was only Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, really. Friday, I just, I, dr I drove home, so I worked real hard for three days. Uh, the last day was just a 400-mile cruise home in the morning with a load I got on now, but... Uh, anyways, Tuesday, uh, we left the house at 8 o'clock in the morning. We went and loaded in Blyville, went to Butler, Indiana, one coil, 44,000 pounds at 1,458.99 at 261 a loaded mile on 559 miles. Of course, if this is your first video, all these numbers are to me after CRST takes 25% of the things they take 25% of, which is basically line haul only and extra stop pay, but they usually roll that in law. The line haul now okay then we deadheaded 152 miles uh to burns harbor indiana um and yeah so was this wednesday morning so wednesday morning i unloaded i reloaded in burns harbor which is where i went and then i drove to granite city and unloaded that night now that uh so unload reload and unload all in one day um that was another coil at 40,000 pounds. That paid me 747.40 at 244 on 306 miles. That headed seven miles the next morning and we loaded in Granite City, Illinois as well, going to Portage and that had to load in the morning, unload the same day. And then after I unloaded, I went and reloaded the coil I have on now. So like I said, I was working hard this week. Wasn't Going real far, but man, it was unload, reload, unload, reload, all all in the same day, man. Just uh, uh, yeah, that'll that'll test you. Uh, anyways, that paid me seven eighty five, thirty eight, two sixty four, and two hundred ninety seven miles. Um, of course, I'm loaded now. We're gonna leave early in the morning, about five thirty six o'clock, which I don't like getting up that early, but I don't want to leave today, so it is what it is. We're just get it done, and uh, it's not a good coil either. In fact, Ricky had told me, oh yeah. He, he offered me this Blue Springs that brought me by the house. I'm like, I don't know. Those have been garbage. He goes, this one pays pretty good. Well, his definition of pay pretty good and mine is not the same. Although a dry van guy would kill for this rate. But this is the cheapest load I've hauled. I'll just give you a preview for next week. This is the cheapest load I've hauled in four years. Uh, it's a coil. Uh, pays me. Uh, the only thing is, is $1,212 on... 600 miles that's that's well within my day rate of a thousand bucks so i'm kind of happy with it but mileage wise it's a dollar 93 a mile we don't want to make a habit of that especially since we lost money this week but we'll get to that now so anyway so that gave me um 
for the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, really. Yeah, Friday was just driving home, but whatever. Uh, 2,991.77. My CRST deductions, my trailer rent, base plates, bobtail insurance, all that jazz, quail calm, trans flow, all that good stuff. 370. Tire payment of 350. I think I only have one more tire payment, so I almost got all my tires paid off. Uh, fuel, and we're a little heavy on fuel, which makes this week look bad because actually there's a full tank of fuel that is for this load, but it's in the envelope, so we put it in there. Uh, 12 36 uh, I bought work gloves, uh, 1578 I included that here because you can, so you know you can write that off. I paid $40 in reserve parking, had $94.40 in a truck and trailer wash. I uh, bought a, had to buy an alternator, snapped a bolt off. That's just my kind of luck. I go, I'll tighten up the belt on an alternator. Bolt snapped, and I spent two hours trying to heat it up. Could not get it out for nothing um, to the point. I probably hurt the alternator getting it so hot and briefing on it. Anyway, so I just bought another one. At a premium price, and I won't do it again because I got an. Uh, I'm gonna order one here maybe tonight. Um, I could get that same alternator off the internet for like 150 bucks, but had to have it, so I had to go to. Uh, they didn't have one at my Thermo King dealer here, but went to a travel ball baseball tournament last weekend. Is when I picked this up in St. Louis, which made that whole trip a work-related trip and a tax write-off. But I didn't include all that in here. Uh, so that was 36304. Uh, last week, uh, that Monday, my truck was in the shop. That's why I left Tuesday. I had both rear end fluids changed. Um, I do that every 250,000 miles. I had the truck greased. And my air conditioner still wasn't working right. So it actually was a thermostat that he had to rewire. They had an updated one. Uh, so I had to tear the dash apart, run the wires, redo the whole thing. Uh, in fact, for the rear end, both rear ends, he only charged me like not even 300 bucks. Uh, the rest of it was this, uh, seems like he did something else too, but the thermostat greased the truck. I want to say he fixed something else, but I can't remember. Uh, anyways, all that was 786.74, then I had 178.09 in tolls come through on the credit card. So we made a whopping minus 442.84 this week is what it is, right? Um, oh, those are the spots. Let's do the uh, the mileage, which of course is ugly. So we had 11.62 uh, loaded miles, 257 uh, loaded miles, 13.21 all miles all in at 2.26 all miles all in. Uh, my cost per mile, of course, was $2.60, so it cost me $0.34 cents a mile to run my truck this week. Isn't it great? All right, so for your lease purchase, guys, real quick, on a week like this, which is kind of ugly, what I did was, let's see, I added the tires back because you wouldn't have that. Um, the alternator, of course, you wouldn't have that. And my shop repair bill of $78.74, you wouldn't have that. That's $14.99.78. Of course, you would have less fuel, but that's fine. Um, so that brought it to $14.99.78 or, or $14 back in from the $4.42 minus. Gives you a profit of uh, or, um, your starting would be $10.56.94. You get, um, I spot you $730 bucks cost above what I do because you have the lease payment. Uh, you're probably paying into your escrow, things like that. So I do $1,100 minus my $370. So a $730 spot. Um, roll that in there. And then you would have had $250.99 worth of maintenance if they got you for every, if they got you for $0.19 cents on all those miles, which uh, I say it every week. But I don't think they always get you for that. Add all that in, you would have made $75 this week. <laughs> That's not a good business model, but you beat me by, uh, shoot, four forty-two, So I was minus four forty-two. You got 75 bucks. That's trucking. We don't want to do it every week. Hey, a shout out. Um, thanks to Kyle. I actually broke even here. A Kyle O, your second driver referral. Thank you very much, my friend. Uh, if you guys are interested in coming over here, um, 
hopefully you've watched other videos than this. Usually we do good. This is not a good week. Um, I'll put Tanya's number up here. Call her. She's great. If you're needing to get a hold of me for a specific question, that's fine, man. I take 15, 20 calls a week. So go ahead and call me up. She will give you my number or she will text me yours, one of the one or the other. Um, if you just want to talk to me, I don't know why. Or if there's a question she can't answer, she will send you to me anyways. Um, so there's her, I put her number up. If you guys come, you want to put me as a referral, awesome. Appreciate that. There's my driver ID somewhere up there. If you don't want to put me as a referral, that's cool too. All right, guys, got to roll. Sun's going down. I'm going to spend a little time with the family and relax, and then I'm going to go to bed here pretty quick. I am not a 5 a.m. in the morning kind of guy anymore, but we're going to do it tomorrow. We're loaded, headed to Blue Springs. It's about a, yeah, it's about a five-hour ride with traffic and everything, so let me get out of here at 5.36. We'll be there by 10.30, 11, so... And then we'll figure out, I don't have a load after that. I'm waiting for Taylor to find me something in the morning. So we'll probably come back up to Blyville and load something. All right, guys, we'll see you. Have a good one. God bless you. Bye-bye.